What's up, crew? I'm Alan, and if I can have a rad day on a bike, so can you. In this episode, we look at the weirdest bike I've ever ridden. It is the Structure Cycle Works SCW1. Yeah, it has some unique aesthetics, but we know better than to judge something totally based on its appearance. We're going to be looking at trail performance as well as what Structure Cycle Works is trying to do with that linkage front end. I really dig that Structure Cycle Works owns the interesting appearance of their bike by calling that suspension system WTF, and that stands for Without Telescoping Fork. It's funny, but it also gets right at the heart of what they're trying to do. According to Structure Cycle Works, there's certain things about a telescoping fork that needs fixing. Now, if I had to sum it up real quick, I would say it has mostly to do with wheel path. With a telescoping fork, which is just a traditional fork, the front wheel follows a rearward path as the suspension compresses. So as the suspension compresses, this contributes to the shortening of the wheelbase. If you've watched any of the pink bike huck to flats, you know what I'm talking about. Also, according to Structure Cycle Works, the rearward path of the front wheel will cause the head tube angle to steepen. I can see how that's true when only the fork is compressing, and maybe this is going to be happening when you're going slow and it's steep, you're under braking, but I think things like low speed compression and some body positioning can mitigate that. But that's just my opinion, I'm not an engineer, so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Now, there's probably a whole bunch of other stuff with kinematics and all kinds of stuff that I don't have enough education to talk about, but but I would say it's pretty much all down to what that wheel is doing in the front. So if you want to change the wheel path of the front wheel, you got to use a linkage suspension. And that's what Structure Cycle Works is doing. Now, the question is, is that linkage front end better than a traditional fork? The linkage front end does change the wheel path so the wheelbase doesn't shorten so much and the head tube angle doesn't steepen so much. Is it actually working though? And I would say, based purely on descending characteristics, the answer is yes. When it was steep, the SCW1 was hella supportive and in the chunk, it was hella composed. Looking at the footage, it was really interesting to see what the handlebars were doing. With the SCW1 and that linkage front end, the handlebars tended to move more up and down in repeated hits. Riding the same terrain on the Nomad, the handlebars seemed to come back towards me a little bit more. This to me was an obvious difference between the two suspension systems. I will say though, there were times in the chunk when that front end felt a bit sluggish. Oh shit! <laughs> it is a really active front end. I probably could have tuned that out of the bike, but according to Structure Cycle Works tuning chart, I was already in the most aggressive setup. Now, I didn't do a whole bunch of jumping, but I did enough to know that compared to something like a single pivot bike, it's not overly excited to get off the ground. But with a little bit of coaxing, it'll handle a lip just fine. One area where this bike definitely surprised me was cornering. Turns and berms, this thing railed. I actually couldn't believe it. Looking at the bike, you wouldn't expect it, but in the turns, you can just lay this thing over. That wheelbase extending as you drop into the suspension, ah, I just didn't expect it, but yeah, this thing turns really good. Another place where the bike surprised me was in steppy climbs. If I was putting the power down, it actually felt like the front end was pushing itself up and over steps instead of coming back into me like a traditional fork would do. Also on the climbs, you would think you would run into trouble in tight switchbacks, but it actually handled just fine. Ah. Nice. So yeah, based on what Structure Cycle Works is trying to do, I would say that the SCW1 is succeeding. But does that make the SCW1 a better bike? Are the advantages big enough for the trade-offs? One of the trade-offs is weight. Probably no surprise to anybody, but it came in at about 37 and a quarter pounds, which is just under four and a half pounds heavier than my Nomad. And that weight isn't gonna do you any favors on the climbs, especially because that front end is so active. That may help when the climbs get technical, but in general, climbing it is a bit of a chore. And more broadly, it's not exactly a sporty bike. You're not necessarily gonna get any PRs, but if that doesn't matter to you, it's probably not a trade-off. Personally, I found it a bit sluggish. I would put down power to get it back up to speed and it would just take a little longer than I was used to. By the way, if you're digging this, there's a new way to support the channel. Check out that super thanks button down there. 
Another definite trade-off is the WTF suspension does add a layer of complexity and additional maintenance. It's nothing that a decent tech couldn't handle, but it will probably hit you in the bank account. Another way it's gonna hit you in the bank account is when you go to purchase it. The SCW1 is gonna be generally more expensive than comparable bikes. I'm not gonna talk numbers here because depending on what brand you're looking at, the difference is either gonna be small, medium, or large. And finally, there's the appearance of the bike. Depending on who you are, this may or may not matter to you. When I was riding the bike, I got accustomed to it, but I can't say I ever fell in love with it. Regardless of how you feel about the looks though, you're gonna be getting looks on the trail. Like it or not, you're gonna be having conversations about your bike if you ride an SCW1. Again, this is gonna depend on you, whether you're cool with that or not. I definitely had a lot of conversations about this bike on the trail. I even had one guy at one point, like fully do a U-turn, come back, take a picture of the bike, he wasn't even a mountain biker. So those are some of the potential trade-offs of the SCW1. But are the advantages big enough to justify those trade-offs? I would say if you're regularly riding steep and chunky terrain and you don't mind the looks, the looks of the bike as well as the looks you're going to be getting on the trail, it is worth trying out a Structure Cycle Works SCW1. For me, the advantages were real, but not big enough to outweigh the trade-offs. Now, I measured how big the advantages were by how much I missed them when I went back to the Nomad and the traditional fork. I could tell the difference, but in the end, it was more different than better or worse. For instance, there were things that I decided to ride harder when I was on the SCW1. Going back to the Nomad, I decided to hit it just as hard, and I found that that Fox 38 telescoping fork work just fine. Different, but not necessarily better or worse. Now, let me be clear. I think the SCW1 is a good bike. It's possibly even a great bike, partly because they've created a bike with a linkage front end that rides pretty much like a regular bike, but has some additional advantages. You gotta remember that bikes haven't always had linkage rear ends. There was a time when they looked weird, when they were heavier, when they were overcomplicated, but eventually they became the norm. Now, I'm not trying to say that linkage front ends are gonna become the norm, but I am looking forward to seeing what Structure Cycle Works is gonna do in the future. And until next episode, go have a rad day and help somebody else have a rad day.